one thing that came out of the second quarter earnings um, call and uh, and results was that the content slate was not enough to drive sub gross ads or stem churn in the second quarter. And so what that means is that the model is definitely hit driven. So it, it, it does depend on on whether or not there's a content will keep subscribers onto the platform or keep new uh, drive new subscribers onto the platform. And we saw you know with the Dave Chappelle. Um, comedy um, special um, this summer. There was a lot of um, a lot of buzz. Uh, drove a lot of people to the platform. We saw an uptick in usage of, of of Netflix around that particular time when he was on when he first came out. So it is a hit driven business, um, despite the fact that they have uh, conditioned investors to believe that Netflix is not a hit driven business, but it is. And so um, you know, the politician looks exciting. Unbelievable looks exciting. There's a few stand-up comedy specials that are coming out. Bill Burr, Mo Gilligan, um, The Spy, the limited series looks uh, appealing with uh, Sacha um, Baron Cohen. So, yes, there's a lot of um, appealing content coming in uh, in the month of September, uh, especially that I think should drive consumers onto the platform, especially now that the competitive um, um, space mm-hmm. is uh, becoming more intense over the next year. Well, well, they, Victor, as you know, put the term binge watching into our vocabulary. They pioneered it, dumping every show out at once. But was that is that a decision that's going to come back to haunt them? Because you can subscribe to Netflix, watch whatever it is, eight shows in a week, then cancel your subscription, wait a few months till the next show that you're interested in, resubscribe. Are they going to have to change their model of viewership to sort of stretch it out so people don't have that churn? No, I think that, that that's a core defining factor for Netflix. You know, they created this um, this format. Um, I don't think they'll walk it back. And this, what, what you described, has been happening since the beginning of time for Netflix. Um, and it'll continue to happen, but it just happens at the margin. And not, it's not a significant impact on, on, on uh, uh, subscriber growth or churn. And so only a small subset of of, uh, of the viewers actually come in and out, come in and out every single month, depending on on the, the hits on the platform. So no, I don't think they walk it back. I think, um, but I do think Netflix has other issues, you know, like a, lack of pricing power, an intrinsically high valuation that needs to come in further. I think, and um, and the competition, like I said, that's coming out at lower prices will be an issue for them. Now, Victor, you've got a hold rating, but a $310 price target on the stock. That's roughly $47 above where the stock is now. So I'm assuming you've got to either look at your rating, maybe pop it to a buy, or bring that price target down at some point. Yeah, so that's uh, the price target I had following the second quarter earnings um, conference call and results. Um, and I cut the price target significantly because of the, some of the issues I just mentioned. Um, and I'll reevaluate whether or not you know things have changed materially, and whether or not I'll need to change my my valuation on the stock. So um, you know, stay tuned on that. But you know, I think there's lots of uncertainty in this business model that, at the very least, could um, you know deter new investors from come entering the stock, or at worst, um, for the equity, force existing investors to reevaluate the positions mm-hmm. with an eye for trimming or exiting the positions altogether. So. With that said, though, we'll need to see whether or not how strong this content slate is, whether the politician will be unbelievable with some of the new um, um, originals that, or films that are coming out, yeah. whether or not it's enough to offset you know, some of the issues I just laid out.